In this tips and tricks, we're going to talk about folder structure and being organized. Arguably, compositing is the art of collecting things and then combining them into new creations. A huge part of this is finding the assets or making the assets that you're going to use to make your final image. Keeping these organized is a you know, really important process to this. So in this video, I'm going to talk about kind of a a generic folder structure that I like, you know, each studio I've worked at has little twists on this basic structure and I've picked up things that I liked from different places over the years. Um, to start out, basically, you know, I like to work, if I'm working in a big multi-client environment, then I have a client folder and then a project folder buried inside that client folder inside any given project, you know, whether that's a commercial campaign, an episodic TV show, a feature film, some other project or web series, uh, you can then break that up into individual chunks or episodes is how we'll look at them. So inside an episode, I actually like this setup. You know, you actually start with a Dropbox. We receive files from many different vectors you know, a, a coordinator, a supervisor, a producer, you're getting things via email, you're getting a spare links, you're getting Dropbox links, you're getting Frame.io, you're getting all these different, you know, there, there are all these different avenues that you're receiving files, they're different formats, they're zipped, they're not zipped. Um, one of the things I like to do is actually to create a Dropbox folder. That Dropbox folder serves as a hub. You know, anything incoming will go into this where it will live until it can be appropriately, you know, parsed or moved or determined if it's duplicate or not duplicate and go to its appropriate folder. You know, that's random stuff that needs sorting, disorganized spreadsheets, fake screen burns, poorly named LUTs, you know, pulls from the client, pulls from the client from yesterday, you know, final reference and then final, final reference. You know, any, anything that needs a home, I like to throw into this Dropbox, and that keeps me from cluttering up the rest of my project folders. We can step back into that, and depending on the nature of the studio, some studios are heavily involved in the pre-production shooting and post-production um, prior to visual effects. You know, and even like the last studio I was at, we did our own color and delivered directly to vendor, you know, the um, broadcast outlets. So next up, you'd have like a pre-production folder. Pre-production is where you would want to keep your pre-production files. So that'd be bids, breakdowns, previs, scripts, you know, anything related to leading up to shooting of the project. Production is the actual creation you know, physical creation of the media is the way I like to think about it. That's on set. You know, that's shooting actual footage. Or if you're in a more CG environment, you know, previs and starting to build some of those, you know, those assets. Um, you know, this folder, as far as post is concerned, contains everything that's generated on the day. So that would include dailies, the actual high res footage, more previs if you're doing some kind of, you know, AR, live action, previs, set photos and survey data are huge. You know, this includes camera reports, HDR light probes, uh, actual reference photography, you know, all, all kinds of information that you might accumulate while on set. And, you know, keeping it here is also a very clean space for that information because a lot of this is really heavy and a lot of it's, you know, unnecessary for post-production you know once an edit's locked usually visual effects just works with what's needed so we don't need everything there and having a production folder lets you sort of silo that away from the rest of your production files next up is the actual post folder this is where your post-production working files and working assets live um, you know an asset in this case you know, we, we, I talk about assets, but an asset is basically any form of media. You know, that could also encompass LUTs and templates and stuff like that. But yeah, usually it's a media, you know, it's media that you're managing. 
And that media can be common among shows, among episodes, among shots, or unique to individual shots. So I actually like to have a tiered assets structure. So we have, you know, show level assets, episode level assets, and shot level assets. And that can be anything from, ref, you know, photography, still images, moving images, renders, denoised plates. There's a, you know, lots of stuff can go in that bucket. Depending on what your workflow is, I like to categorize each pro each step in the process as its own folder. So if you do color correction, I like to have a color correction folder. If you're doing editorial internally, I like to have an editorial folder. You know, even if you're not doing editorial per se, most of the time you still have a visual effects editor and you're still doing work to cut into an edit or render out edits. Um, technically editorial is where you would want to hide your reference. Motion graphics, same thing. Your motion projects will live here. I actually do like to bake the reference folder out so that there's one common reference folder for all the different departments. I've found that, you know, if you don't do this, you wind up having each department working off a different set of reference unless somebody's really on top of making sure everybody has the right files in their hand. Um, visual effects, which is more what we're talking about in this series, I like to have a similar structure as what we just saw. We have assets, we have plates, we have reference, we have shots. You know, sometimes the reference for visual effects is different than the reference that motion or color might need. You know, it might be a clip where the editor has gone and added a screen burn every time there needs to be a gunshot or a sound effect or some other element that is related to visual effects production. Plates, this is usually processed plates as the, you know, the full plates are living in the production side. So this would be where you might put things that have been rendered or LUDed or otherwise processed from the actual raw footage. Shots, this is where we start to get into the meat of it. I like to create, and you can actually nest that if you want to do a sequence or you can split it up by sequences and then have shots live inside the sequences. That's really more of a personal preference thing. This is my personal preference. I like to have a shots folder and then inside that I have a delivery folder which is whatever the nature of the deliverables are, those go here. You know, I don't like to have final deliveries actually rendered into shot folders. Those usually have temp files or they get muddy. That's, that's an artist's working space. So once we're into a shot, again, we have an assets folder. That's a shot level asset. So if you denoise a plate for a specific shot, that would go here. That wouldn't go higher up in the hierarchy. Um, comp. This is if we're doing comp work, which is what we're doing. So you would put your nuke scripts here. I like to have a flat structure most of the time. If it starts to get heavier, you're working with multiple artists. I like to divide that into folders. So you could have, you know, and base those folders on the type of the work. If it's removing a background thing, if it's tracking, if it's roto, you create those folders and then you version inside those. Um, otherwise, I like to just have one, you know, one naming convention in this folder. That is your master script. That way, everyone knows exactly what the master is and what's creating the output that is the ultimate finished shot. Renders. This is more of a working render folder. This is where the nuke scripts are actually rendering out to um, prior to QC. I like to bake an extra layer of render in so that when a shot is QC'd, it then gets rendered to its final deliverable form. Um, whether that's for a quick time or an EXR, you know, whether it's a daily just for viewing purposes or it's an actual final file that will move on to color. So that kind of sums up my preferred folder structure. Um, as I mentioned in the, you know, the previous chapter, keeping things named cleanly is hugely important. You know, the more organized you can be, the more the easier it'll be for other artists to maneuver through your scripts and through your folders and projects. This also creates a fairly portable system. You know, it's a little easier to move these files around with less, you know, less headaches in terms of relinking and putting things back together if you keep everything very cleanly organized.